Uh, my name is Reju Pillai, and I'm a customer engineer with Google Cloud. Uh, I specialize in application modernization, and I work on Kubernetes and Kubernetes-based solutions, as you can see from here. So today I want to talk about a very special use case. It's also a very common one. It's called auto scaling. And uh, oftentimes we have seen that customers move their workload to public cloud because they get this unlimited supply of compute, storage, uh, network, and memory. But oftentimes we've also seen that they struggle to right size their workload. What should be the CPU size and the memory, uh, you know, for for their workload when they put it on a on a system like Kubernetes? So that's what we're going to look at today. So without any further ado, let's get started. Managed Kubernetes offering in the market. About nine months back, we celebrated the fifth year anniversary uh, from the time GK was generally available to the customers. Uh, in Gartner's evaluation of managed Kubernetes offering, GK was the strongest in almost every category. GK is also the only Kubernetes offering that supports four uh, auto scaling dimensions uh, and has proven success in partnering on cost optimization framework for our customers. Five auto scalers HPA, BPA, MPA, CA, and node auto permission. While the below two are infrastructure level auto scaling, that is node auto scalers, the above ones are the pod or workload auto scalers. HPA horizontally scales multiple pods based on the number of replicas when the system parameters such as CPU and memory for a pod exceeds uh, the set thresholds. Uh, VPA, on the other hand, uh, doesn't create new pod instances, but instead tries to dynamically adjust resources such as CPU and memory to meet the applications. MPA is the best of both worlds. Uh, not only does it create more number of replicas, but it also vertically scales the pod, like in the case of VPA. The requirement is that both HPA and VPA cannot be configured on the same metric. For example, if HPA is based on CPU, then the VPA cannot be based on CPU, but it can be based on, uh, let's say, memory. Uh, the cluster autoscaler works in tandem with the pod autoscaler uh, and helps provision the VMs or worker nodes when a particular pod is scheduled, but none of the existing no nodes can run it. Uh, and finally, we have uh, NAP or uh, Node Auto Provisioner. It helps scale different T-shirt sizes uh, based node pools. For example, a regular 2 CPU, 4 GB uh, configuration or a compute intensive uh, 60 CPUs and 240 GB and so on and so forth. Uh, the actual cost saving, however, is in the infrastructure layer, but all of them really you know, work uh, in tandem and are related. And today, our focus is going to be on the PPA. Uh, Uh, so the specs are like this. I have picked up a node which is sufficiently large at 64 GB. I have a pod limit at 8 GB. That means if the pod tries to exceed this limit, it will be automatically killed with an OON kill status. Uh, set a request uh, at 2 GB. So this is the minimum memory which uh, the Kubernetes cluster uh, tries to allocate for the pod when it, it is trying to schedule. However, it so happened that my application does not require more than 1 GB to run. So this is a classic uh, case of an over-provisioned infrastructure where uh, the infrastructure is 2 GB while I require only 1 GB. I have another program uh, which is a Java based uh, environment, and uh, the JVM basically brings in two more concepts which is uh, XMX and XMS, which are the heap minimum and heap maximum. So the Java program does not have a visibility beyond the heap uh, uh, of the JVM. So that is why it is also important. Uh, but here I am starting with a very uh, low request of uh, 500 MB or a 0.5 GB. But my application actually requires 2 GB to run properly. So this is actually a classic case of uh, under provision infrastructure. So my expectation from the VPA is that in the previous case, it is going to step down and release 1 GB and set the limit uh, to uh, an appropriate value. At the same time, in the Java program, uh, my expectation is that it is going to automatically step up that pod request from 0.5 GB to something more than 2 GB, uh, whatever it recommends. Let's do a quick uh, code walkthrough. So I've written these two programs. One is the Python, another is the Java. Let's look at the Python first. So the memory eater program uh, runs in an infinite loop. It sleeps for one second, and every second it eats up 50 MB of memory in a chunk. Um, but as it reaches to 1 GB, uh, we have a throttle applied here. So it would not eat any further memory once it reaches that 1 GB limit. What we also have here is a deploy uh, YAML file, which is a deployment descriptor. You would see that the VPA is configured on this deployment. So memory eater deploy is the program that keeps a watch on this deployment. So this is how you link 
uh, the VPA to the deployment and uh, we will also see here that the original requested limits are uh, 2 GB for the pod request. Let's quickly look at uh, the Java program as well. Um, here again uh, we are running an infinite loop and um, this is again eating up uh, memory in a 100 MB chunk and uh, by the time it reaches uh, a particular threshold it uh, stops to uh, you know, eat further memory. Um, you will also see that I have used uh, a runtime uh, library to get the total memory and here is a docker file where I have mentioned uh, the upper limit and the lower limits for the heat memory. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. So let's go ahead and uh, deploy the application. So I've got a simple uh, make program here. And you see this. So it uh, basically builds or compiles the code, uh, creates a Docker image, and then pushes that image to a GCI registry. And then uh, using the deploy.yaml manifest file, it uh, pulls it down from the GCI registry and, and deploys the port to the Kubernetes cluster. So, fairly straightforward. I'm also using K9s. Uh, it's a pretty good visual tool to uh, look at all the objects within the Kubernetes cluster. Program is eating up memory at 50 MB per second rate. But you'll also see that by the time it reaches 1 GB, it will start to throttle because we have put a limit to limit in the application. You'll also see that the free memory available is the entire node memory which was set at 64 GB. Let's see if the VP has made any recommendation. So if you see this is the 30th generation of the recommendation, that means before this it has made 29 recommendations and I'm expecting that it should have reset. Um, the, uh, the limits so the target is what we should look for so the memory if you see it has come down from 2 GB to 1.27 GB it not only made a recommendation around this if the auto mode is set it will go ahead and change the limit as well which you can verify from the port spec um, if you go in here you will see that the memory is now set to 1.2 GB, which is the uh, minimum required or guaranteed uh, memory required for the program to run. Of course, there is a limit uh, which is 4.8 GB, but this is not really that important. Have, uh, what is important is the minimum uh, required uh, memory. Let's look at the Java program also parallelly. <coughs> You'll see that the Java program is also, uh, you know, uh, consuming somewhere around uh, 3 GB of memory. Now, uh, based on this, let's look at the recommendation the VP has made. So, here again, it is the 32nd generation, uh, that means code the 31 recommendation has been made, and this is now set at 3.7 GB. So, unlike the previous case in which it reduced the memory, in this case, it has increased it from 0.5 GB to 3.7 GB. Scalers that can be used effectively to right size the workload and hence reduce infrastructure cost. The VPA can be set in update mode equals to auto, which will automatically change the port request and port limits on the go. Different program runtimes, like we saw Python and Java, may behave differently based on where the code is running. Pod and node auto scalers, like uh, HPA, VPA, and CA, can be combined to get the best results. That's all for now. Happy Kubernetes and happy GKE.